Morality is incompatible with egoism, because the former does not allow validity to me, but only to the man in me. But if the state is a society of men, not a union of egos, each of whom has only himself before his eyes, then it cannot last without morality, and must insist on morality. Therefore we too, the state and I, are enemies. I, the egoist, have not at heart the welfare of this human society. I sacrifice nothing to it. I only utilize it. But to be able to utilize it completely, I transform it rather into my property and my creature, i.e. I annihilate it and inform in its place the union of egoists. Let us take a fine tooth comb to this union and examine it more closely. Firstly, I find it important to point out that the union of egoists is not necessarily a wholly conscious, concerted effort. It is not a group of people having their weekly egoist book club meeting, on time and on schedule. There is no official declaration, no formal membership, no secret handshakes or passwords. Although none of the aforementioned activities are inherently opposed to the union of egoists, only we must get it out of our heads that all unity must consist of some structured, sacred, cult-like following of arbitrary rules and fixed ideas. The union of egoists can be as simple and casual as the local kids on the block setting up a game of tag or hide and go seek, or some friends meeting up at a bar to catch up and have a drink. Further, the union of egoists is a response to those spooky, floating abstractions that Stirner sets himself up against, the state, the church, man, morality, etc. The union is primarily defined by what it is not, and what it is not is a society, a government, an economic system, a code of ethics, an association. It rejects such things from a materialist worldview. There are, however, positive definitions of the union, definitions that seek to establish the union based off of specific characteristics. Such characteristics are based around the mutual consent of all participants, who, by an act of will, renew their membership of the union on a constant basis. If one wishes to leave the union on the basis that their ego becomes dissatisfied with it and no longer serves their individual self-interest, they can simply rescind their membership by an act of will, just as easily as they renew their membership with the union. If every ego within the union becomes dissatisfied, if the group becomes dogmatic and controlling, if the definition we used above to describe the union becomes a fixed definition, Stirner says that the union has degenerated or dissolved into something else, some kind of collective of unconscious egoists who only limit each other. The Christian people has produced two societies whose duration will keep equal measure with the permanence of that people. These are the societies, state and church. Can they be called a union of egoists? Do we in them pursue an egoistic, personal, own interest? Or do we pursue a popular, i.e. an interest of the Christian people? To wit, a state and a church interest. Can I and may I be myself in them? May I think and act as I will? May I reveal myself, live myself out, busy myself? Must I not leave untouched the majesty of the state, the sanctity of the church? So, we see the union as a form of free association of egos. It is non-coercive, unlike the state who demands you obey its will and act not on behalf of your own conscious self-interest, but on behalf of abstractions. The union is reciprocal. It is based upon intercourse, as Turner defines it. In this way, the union is not a fixed, sacred ideal or association, but a fluid, mutually utilitarian union wherein members are free to act and think as they wish. They are not subjugated by a higher ideal, and the union itself is not an association of man, but of man. In other words, the union of egoists is an intercourse between man. <laughs> Holy shit, the union of egoists is really, really gay. Oh my, only, only writing it down if I realize this. So, the union of egoists is an intercourse between men. That's gay. That's really gay. The union of egoists is just gay. Okay, all amateur jokes aside, I'd like to finish by adding my own few comments. A bit of a criticism or question, if you will, and that is, if the union of egoists is primarily defined by what it is against, and it can be as simple as a group of friends hanging out and enjoying each other's company, why even define it at all? That is to say, 
What is the point of giving it a name when such a gathering is already so simple and unconscious that we've gone for centuries without having to define it, and in a way, formalize it? Anyway, please give this video a like, a dislike, subscribe to my channel, and please be sure to leave a comment. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Is Sterner onto something? Is my criticism a valid one? Is the union of egoists really gay? Let me know.